Ladles and Jelly Spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. Uh, <laughs> this is a piece of uh, 0.25mm uh, styrene, uh, or plasticard, or plastic sheet, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and the reason I've got this is because I'm going to try and make something. Now, on a diorama that I've been working on recently, I wanted to have a filing cabinet. And so I had a look online and, and looked at, at 135th scale filing cabinets and I found some but they were all, uh, they either weren't quite what I was looking for or they were very expensive. Um, so I thought I'd have a go at making my own. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. So let's get on with it. Right, so I'm going to make two of these uh, cabinets, one with three drawers and one with four drawers. The process for both exactly the same, uh, the difference being the four drawer one will be slightly taller. So this is the three drawer one. So I have decided that um, I'm going to do it 15 millimeters square. So what I need to do first, this, this is a piece I've just cut on the guillotine. Uh, so this is 60 millimeters square. And what I need to do now is divide this up into four 15 millimeter strips. So 15, 30 and 45, do the same at the other end, Fifteen, thirty, forty-five. 30, 45, I'll just join those lines up, and now you might say why have I made this 60mm if the cabinet is only going to be 30mm tall, well, it's because we need the top and the bottom. So they will also need to be 15 millimeters square. So what we do is we measure down from the top, 15 millimeters, and we'll do the same over here. And we do the same at the bottom. and 15 and we draw the lines across there and now we have our four sides and the top and the bottom so what we'll do is we will get rid of those get rid of those and now what we'll do is we'll take our knife that has a nice new blade on it and we will score some of these lines and cut some of the others. So what we'll do is we measure up on this line here like that and we just want to score this like that and then when we get to this end we actually want to cut through it and then we do the same on this line just score it like that and then the same again here and score it and then at the top here we want to cut it so from this line up to the top, like that. Now we cut across here, so we need to leave this one and cut this off. And then do the same on the bottom. And now we can bend these parts over like that. We don't want to break it, we just want to bend it. And the scores 
basically give us a nice clean bend. So just very, very gently bend it into place like that. And then if we fold that up, oh, we have a nice little box, you see. Now, before we glue this together, I'm going to reinforce it slightly. So I have here uh, a piece of angled styrene, again from Evergreen. And I'm just going to cut this uh, to length to fit inside. So basically we're going to go about 30 millimeters. just cut four of these so that's four of those and now we get our glue oh, this is this is it's a bit fiddly to start with but basically we want to take one of these pieces of angle put it on there and then put some glue on it Like that. Make sure it's in the right place. Like that. And then we fold up our box like that. And we glue this end. Like that. Make sure it's as square as we can get it. Like that, you see. And now we take our little reinforcing rods and we put them in the corners like that. And we put a bit of glue on there, put it in place, like that, do the same at the other end, just make sure that's nice and tight in the corner, like that. And what that does is it, you can see already, it's made it a lot more rigid. Stop laughing at the back. And the last one goes in. Now, once you've got everything glued up inside, you can fold the top down like that. Make sure it's as square as you can get it and glue it down. And if you're better at cutting than I am, which quite frankly isn't difficult, you should have minimal cleanup to do afterwards. You might have a few little holes here and there, that's fine, you just fill those in. And there we go. So that's our basic box structure done. Now we need to make it look like a filing cabinet. Right, so we need to make uh, some drawer fronts for this now. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure, now we know that that's 
15 millimeters wide. So we don't, obviously don't want the drawer fronts exactly that wide. So what we're going to do is we're going to make them um, about 13 millimeters wide. So what we'll do is we'll take one of our strips here. Now this is obviously 15 millimeters wide because that's what we cut it at before. So what we'll do is we will take two millimeters there and two millimeters there and we'll cut this off like that keep that off cut because you're going to want that in a minute I'll show you why but keep that handy now for the draw fronts the box is 30 millimeters again we don't want to just cut it 3 10 millimeter because we want a bit of reveal so what we want to do is just space it back slightly so that we get a little bit of reveal around each draw front so what I'm going to do is go about 9 millimeters for each draw so we'll put that there and we will measure 9 and then 18 and 27 so 9 18 27 and we cut those off but what I'll do I think I'll probably cut these with the scissors I think it might be easier and three right now we take our filing cabinet and oh, there's a little sticky out bit there I'm just going to trim that off quickly So we decide which side is going to be the front, not that it really matters, so this can be the front. And what we do is we take our draw fronts, this is a pickup tool, it's quite handy for things like this, and we put them on like so, and put them where they need to go. Do not get dust on the end of these if you've got one, because if you do it, it'll ruin it. Make sure you put the lid back on. Now, let's just get these where they need to be. Oh, not like that. So we'll get the first one lined up. And we'll put a bit of glue on there. Hold it in place. Like that. And then we'll line up the second one. I think it's pretty much where it needs to be, so we'll glue that in place. Like that. And then we'll move the third one in. glue that in place. Now you might be looking at this and saying that bottom drawer is level with the bottom of the cabinet and there's a reason for that and I don't know what it is but I've worked in a lot of offices in my time and I've seen a lot of filing cabinets and for some reason the bottom drawer is always level with the bottom. Don't ask me why, I don't know but I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. And there are our drawer fronts. Now we come back to this piece why do we keep this piece? Because this is going to be our, these are going to be our drawer handles. So we'll put that to one side for a minute to dry. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece, we're going to cut it into five millimeter lengths. 
and we're going to use those as our draw fronts. So we just put that like that. This is very awkward to cut with the camera stand in the way, but there we go. So there's one. That's three. So get rid of that bit for a minute. And once again, we take our pickup tool. And what we're going to do is get our glue in, take that, put it in the middle, like so, put a little drop of glue on it, and then take that off. And do the same again here. And last but not least, the one at the bottom. Like that. And we put our tool away. And make sure those are glued down all the way round. And there it is. The first of our filing cabinets. Now I'm going to make another one. Um, Exactly the same process, but it's going to have four drawers. So the only difference will be um, instead of being 30 millimeters tall, it will be 40 millimeters tall and it will have an extra drawer. But aside from that, the process is exactly the same. You just need to adjust your measurements. So let's uh, let this dry while I make the other one. And then I think I'll put a bit of primer on them and we'll see what they look like. Right, so here are our two filing cabinets with a bit of grey primer on them and I think you'll agree they look pretty good. Um, so what I'm going to do now is there are a couple of little like gaps and holes and things in places which is fine so what we'll do is we will fill that with some of our Mr Dissolve putty clean that up and then we'll look at making some moulds. Right so I have built my mould, I have degassed the uh, um, silicon and we'll pour this in the only thing that worries me slightly is that this might um, uh, act like a, a balloon and just lift it up and uh, pop it it will just float to the surface I'm just hoping it will uh, not do that Right, so now we will leave that to cure. Right, so this has had plenty of time for the uh, the rubber to cure, which it has. So now we've got to demold it. Now this should be fairly straightforward. Just need to start pulling the Lego apart. See, Lego's great for building moulds because you can just um, put it, you can just build a box like this, whatever size and shape you want. And uh, when you come to take it out of the mould, what you've got to do is just take it apart like this. And any bits that have leaked through, you just pull out. So I'll just take this out and then we'll see how well we did.
Right, now let's see if we can get this out without wrecking it, because I would actually quite like to keep this bit. Oh. There we go. Now we come. Ah. Right, success. So there's our uh, blank or our master. Still can be used, that's fine. Uh, let's put all this stuff to one side and then we'll have a look at the mould and see how well we did. Right, so I've just tidied this up a bit and it's uh, actually looking fairly good. You can't, it's a bit difficult to see inside the mould obviously because it's, the rubber's translucent. Um, but uh, that's actually a good thing because it means there's no air bubbles in the rubber. If you actually look, you, there are no bubbles in the rubber. There is one bubble um, right there, I don't know if you can see that. Um, but you don't really want bubbles in your rubber. Stop laughing at the back. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do a test pour and I am going to try this mould out and see how well it works. Right, so I need to work fast here. This is a, a fast cast resin um, and it has a very, very short pot life, about five minutes. So I need to work fast on this. Although having said that, this resin is absurdly old. Um, I've had it for years and it's one of these things that, it, like it says on the bottle, um, you know, <laughs> basically dispose of this after six months or it has a shelf life of six months. And I've had this for donkey's years. Someone gave it to me um, many years ago because they bought it, uh, used what they needed out of it and then wanted to get rid of it. So they were like, oh, you, you, you do plastic casting, you can have this. It's like, great. Uh, and it is actually quite useful, but the problem is with it is it does, it's whether or not it will actually cure because it's so old, it might not actually go off, but we'll see. The most important thing is I don't really want to get it all over the place. quickly put this on here I think that is doing something it's warming up so this is um, uh, this paper is a special type of paper that's actually impermeable so it means that at least if I spill it near this it won't go everywhere right let's put that there for a minute let's see if we can pour this into this mold without making a horrible mess Now the other thing is, I've got another mould here, and uh, you might say, well why have I got this one? Well the simple reason is, whenever you do a pour like this, you see there's quite a lot left in that cup, you don't want to waste it. So what you do is you have another, another um, keep a mould handy, and then you can, if you have any left over, you can... Um, pour it into another mould and you don't waste it. Right, there we go. And I'll just sit that on there. And now we'll leave that to hopefully cure. Now it should only take about 10 minutes to set, so let's see what happens. Right, so... This is, uh, I think this is set. <laughs> the trouble is with this resin, it is actually shot. Um, it's supposed to cure in about 10 minutes. Um, it actually, I ended up leaving it in the mold. It's been there for about an hour and a half and it has, I think, gone off, but uh, it's taken a lot longer than it should have done. So I don't know if this is going to come out of this mould alright, but let's let's see if we can get it out um, and see what happens. So just break the seal. Oh, come on. 
There we go. And let's see if we can get this out. Out you come. Oh, that's not too bad. Look at that. There's um, there's one little bubble there, and there's a little tiny bubble there as well, but we can fix those easily enough. But uh, yeah, on the whole, that's uh, that's come out really well. I'm very pleased with that. Oh, there's another bubble there. Look, but that's in the back. That won't matter. So if we take our uh, our original, that's uh, a pretty good facsimile. I think you'll agree. So, and now obviously with the mould we can crank out as many as we want. So I'll get the mould done for the smaller cabinet as well and um, make some more. Right, so to start with I'm going to give the uh, main body of them a coat of this uh, XF22 RLM grey. And now we're going to do a bit of shading with our old favourite XF55 deck tan. So, you might wonder why I'm doing this. Why I'm mottling a chest of drawers and <laughs> filing cabinet. But it's uh, the same reason you would do anything else. It's uh, to provide some tonal variation and to stop the thing just looking grey. So, yeah. That's all there is to it really, it's not um, anything particularly earth shattering, it's just the uh, same reason we would do it on anything else. Now we go back to our uh, RLM grey with a, a watered down, or thinned down coat I should say, not watered down. Right, now we give it a light coat of this grey just to blend everything together. So I just hit that with a hair dryer quickly because I just wanted to show you what it looks like when it's dry. Right, and now I'm going to use this uh, medium C grey just to dress up the uh, drawer fronts a little bit. Right, so I've just masked it off um, just roughly uh, just so that I can uh, get some of this grey on. And again, I'm not going mad with it, I'm just putting a little light coat on just to uh, differentiate the front, the drawer fronts a little bit. There we go, that's all it takes. Right, now we'll uh, dress it up a little bit with a little bit of uh, Citadel chain mail and uh, just put some scratches and chips on it. So we just uh, take our sponge. Bit of paint. And just go around the corners and things. I mean, you can go all over it, but uh, it's mainly the edges that we need to focus on. And the top. Because people have an annoying habit of putting things on top of filing cabinets. Right. That'll do. And uh, while I've got this uh, 
silver I'm going to do the draw uh, handles as well There we go, like that. Now I'm going to give it a lick over with this uh, Humbrol acrylic. This is the gloss rattle can. I actually, I'm starting to really like these rattle cans. They're so easy to use. <laughs> now I've got this panel line accent colour. Now we're just going to go around the, the drawer fronts and the, uh, the handles. Just to give them a, make them stick out a bit. Right, and I've got a couple of oil colours here. Um, these are the, the Crawford and Black. Uh, so I've got Burnt Umber and Orange. So I'm going to put some of these on as well. So I'm not putting a lot of this on. I'm just going to put a little tiny bit on here and there. Because I want to create some streaks. So I don't want too much on here because I'm going to be using some thinner in a minute to... Uh, thin it down so we don't want too much that let's get a bit of the orange I just want it to look like um, there are like areas like the corners and that where it's just started to go rusty so again don't want masses just little bits here and there and you can see I'm kind of focusing on where the chip the paint chips are because obviously that would be the area that would go first. Right, like that. That's all it needs, just a little touch. Now, In this pot, I've got a little splash of uh, white spirit, and I'm going to use this to uh, to thin this down and streak it a bit. So, same brush, but just
So, like I say, we've just got a little bit of thinner on the brush and we're just working this oil paint into some streaks. Just to make it look like it's, uh, you know, been neglected for a while. And also clean up any uh, excess panel liner. And there we go. Don't think that looks too bad, does it? And now to finish it off, I'm going to give it a quick flick over with this uh, Humbrol matte varnish this time. And here are the finished articles. Uh, on the right there we have our two uh, scratch built versions that we made out of some, uh, some styrene sheet. Uh, very, very simple introduction to scratch building. Uh, a few little techniques for putting together some basic shapes and uh, how you can use that to um, create what you need for your dioramas. And then on the left there we have uh, what we've ended up with, which are the, the ones that we made the moulds for and uh, cast out of resin. And uh, of course, having the moulds, it now means we can make as many of these things as we want. So, yeah, uh, hopefully this has been of interest to some of you. Uh, I think they're going to look quite good on the, the diorama they're intended to, to go on, which you'll be seeing in an upcoming video. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.